So we're looking at the graphs of the other four trig functions. Before we get started, uh, take a minute to write out the definitions of all six trig functions. So like that sine of t equals y and cosine of t equals x, those things. Uh, so take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can write those out. Okay, hopefully you got something that looks about like this. Um, once you get to tangent and cotangent in those, you have two different ways you could write them. Tangent is y over x, but since y is sine and x is cosine, you could also write uh, tangent is sine over cosine and so on. So it's worth remembering these, especially these last four, uh, since those are the four that we are going to be looking at in 6.5. Uh, so we would like to graph uh, secant and cosecant and cotangent and tangent and get familiar with why the graphs look the way they do. And then we'll look at transformations. So we've got the secant is 1 over cosine, so let's start with that. And the easiest way to approach this, I think, is to actually look at the graph of cosine and then see how secant looks compared to that. So uh, keep in mind that cosine... Uh, starts at 1, comes down, goes back up, and that happens in a space of 2 pi. Uh, so secant is 1 over the value of cosine. So these places where cosine is 1, uh, 1 over 1 is also 1. So secant will be 1 there, it'll be 1 there. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So secant hits those three points. Um, and everywhere else, like 1 over 1 half, for instance, is 2. And 1 over 1 third, for instance, is 3. And 1 over 1 fifth is 5. So the smaller cosine gets, the bigger secant gets. And you get these loops that look uh, like this. And when cosine is 0, uh, secant so undefined, of course. So you get a, an asymptote there, and you get an asymptote there. Um, so many people find it easiest if they're going to sketch secant, uh, at least in their head, to think of this green cosine line and then just sketch in the graph of secant. Um, and the same thing is true with sine if you are wanting to graph cosecant, uh, you can start with what the graph of sine looks like. Say sine looks like that. And therefore cosecant is going to bounce off of that. So it's going to have a loop that looks like, oops, like this, and a loop that looks like that. And everywhere that sine is zero, uh, cosecant will have an asymptote. Um, so those are your basic graphs of secant and cosecant. And really, if we want to do a transformation, if we want to do two times secant, all the same rules apply. Uh, we can just stretch everything by two. It's also possible to graph two times cosine, graph the green graph first, and then just draw the uh, bounces off of that, uh, whichever way is easier, um, to either just draw secant and then transform it, or to draw transformed cosine and then draw secant off of it. Um, so let's look at the graphs of tangent and cotangent also. Uh, so keep in mind that tangent um, is sine over cosine, and because it's not just one over, it's not quite as easy to sketch, uh, but uh, we'll make use of at least one fact that everywhere cosine is zero, oh, sorry, this is tangent, uh, everywhere cosine is zero, uh, tangent will be undefined. Um, so cosine is zero at pi over two, so let's just go ahead and put an asymptote in first. Uh, at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. 
and 5 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 uh, every odd multiple of pi over 2. And other than that, it takes a little bit more work to sort of figure out what's going on uh, with tangent, but uh, it comes through like this. So it's got asymptote at pi over two, negative pi over two. And keep in mind the period of tangent is just pi. So here's a space of pi. That's one full period of tangent. And we'll get another repeating full period of tangent from pi over two to three pi over two. And it just keeps going on in both directions. And um, cotangent, same sort of an idea. Um, I'll write cotangent first. And cotangent's cosine uh, over sine. And so you get that cotangent um, has asymptotes everywhere that sine is zero. Um, so sine is zero at zero, so there's an asymptote here, and sine uh, is zero, and the next place that happens is at pi. And the next place that happens is at two pi. Um, and beyond that, the rest of cotangent looks like the value of cosine divided by the value of sine. Uh, it ends up coming through like this, and that's one full period, again, from zero to pi. And another full period from pi to two pi. Okay, so those are the graphs of the four new trig functions. And you're going to want to be familiar with them enough that you could just, if I said, give me a quick sketch of cosecant, that you could just quickly sketch it out. Maybe, you know, sketch the sign first and then sketch the cosecant. And if you're writing in pencil, it's always nice to erase the sign and just say the actual graph of cosecant looks like that. Uh, so you want to be familiar enough with all four of those that you can graph them pretty quickly. Uh, because the next thing we're going to want to do is do transformations. And the more familiar you are with the basic shapes, uh, the easier it will be to do the transformations, which we will do in the examples.